in this tutorial, we are looking at Photoshop for beginners. How to master the basics of Photoshop in about 15 minutes or less. So let's jump right into the video. So first things first, the tools panel. You can find it on the left side here. And you find tools like the brush tool, the selection tool, the marquee tools, the pen tool, and even the crop tool can all be found here. If you can't find the tools, you go to Windows and then look for the tool you want and then you click on any of them. And if you want to hide them too, you can just go to Windows, click on the tool and it hides it. So that's how to find the tools. So on the toolbar, where you can find essential tools like the selection, the marquee tools, the crop tool, eraser, and the wonderful tools you'll be using in Photoshop. We have the layers panel and layers panel. I mean, this is your creative canvas where all the magic happens in Photoshop. The properties panel up here, we use that to adjust settings for your selected tools and layers. So any tool you click on, the property shows and then you can adjust the settings and do whatever you want to do with it. And one cool thing is always customize your workspace. And to customize your workspace, you go to Window, Workspace. And then you can create a new workspace. So if I name my workspace, Stano Workspace. And save it. So maybe check everything and then save it. So when I move the layers around, or bring in some new tools. I mess things up and go back to say recess and no workspace. It brings it back to the default one and I can work nicely with it. So always customize the workspace. It will save you a lot of time. So layers and layers are the foundation of Photoshop. Think of them like Transparent sheets of paper stuck on top of each other and you use the eye icon to hide or show a layer One pro tip is always name your layers. It helps you stay organized and it will save you a lot of time in the long run Right Photoshop has dozens of tools So 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 many tools. There are a few of them who you need to know to master the basics like the move to Which is the first tool you see here? It helps you to what, reposition anything on the canvas. Then the selection tool helps you to what, select a specific area. And there are several selection tools. The lasso helps you to do freehand selections. Then the marquee helps you to do what? Either round when you choose the elliptical or square or rectangle if you choose the rectangular marquee. The brush tool which are the shortcut B, the brush tool. If I, if I create a new layer with the brush tool, I can paint with the color I've picked. So that's what the brush tool does. Then the eraser tool with the eraser, which is the shortcut is E. Eraser tool helps me to erase or remove unwanted parts so quickly. And so I'm just erasing it. I can undo, but that's what the eraser tool does. Helps you to erase. Photoshop makes it easy to enhance your images. So we use brightness and contrast, which you can find in the adjustment layer down here. Brightness and contrast to fix lighting issues. So if I increase the brightness, it adds more light. If I reduce the brightness, less light. And then contrast makes it look very edgy or very soft. We adjust colors with the hue and saturation. So hue and saturation here helps us to adjust colors. And the sliders, it helps us to increase the saturation, the lightness, getting colorized. And it, picks, it gives you just one particular color. You want to give one, just one tone of color to it, you click on colorize. There are even presets like sepia 
which looks like a, a black and white with some gold in it sandal type more of bluish kind of sepia and then uh red boost so i mean you can and you can even target specific colors just the reds and then you either play with the saturation also or target yellows you can also target just the greens and you can see this one it will just target the greens in the picture just the greens so that's what the hue and saturation adjustment does also experiment with the color balance to set the mood of the image so color balance sets the mood of the image either make it look warm or cold mainly that's what color balance does you can so and you just have to adjust and play with them and everything i'm doing here is non-destructive so i'm doing an, an adjustment layer which means my original image is not affected And I can just hide or delete the adjustments I've made to them if I don't want it. And as I said, to hide a layer, you just click on the eye and it's gone. If you want it back, you just click on it and it comes back. Do you want to isolate your subject? Photoshop makes background removal so easy. And there are specialized tools and even AI techniques which you can use to remove backgrounds. So the quickest way to, to remove a background, for instance, I want to clear this lady from the background and then give her a new background color. So I go to, I click on any of the selection tools, then give me the chance to what, select and mask. Click on that. Then I get a chance to what, click on select subject. Click on it. And a few seconds, it has selected the subject from the background. Because of her hair, I click on refine hair and it does some beautiful that. Look, just look at that. If you are not satisfied, you can play with the radius and the other adjustments here. But I think it has done a really good selection now. You can toggle between the views to see how the image looks like on several backgrounds. right up here and by pressing F it helps you to toggle between them quickly I know I like working on the overlay because it gives me some contrasty background and for me to see it well but you, you can play on whatever you want and if you're satisfied you scroll down and then output to either a new layer layer mask selection whatever so i i know i like to what new layer with layer mask and i click ok and it outputs the image so now i can bring in a new background so i brought in a new background and look at that so this was the original image and now look at with a new background right typography is one of the coolest thing you can do in photoshop so to work on typography you click on the type tool the shortcut is t on the keyboard click on the type tool and then you tap anywhere on the canvas click on it and it gives the chance to type so i'm going to type what vivacious After typing that, I can select everything and then the properties to up here, I can change either the font or the font style. I like the font Montserrat, but I, I need a bolder one. So I'm going for black. Okay. Then I can use the slider here. That's the, for the increasing the or decreasing the size. Let me give it a, a background to help us see it well. Okay, so and 
and anytime you want to increase a font using the edges hold down the alt so that it doesn't distort the font right click on the layer of the font gives you the blending options the blending options when you can add a stroke to it can we change the color using the color overlay then we choose some yeah we can even pick a color in headdress okay to rate if you are satisfied click okay can you play around with your typography and add any special effects to it? I mean, this is a quick way to go around your type. So, this is how you can play around text and images to create your beautiful posters, banners, wedding invitations, and anything you have. So, after creating your masterpiece, you are left to save. And how do you save in Photoshop? So to save, first of all, you have to know what you are saving it for. Is it for print or just for the web? If you are printing, we go to file, save us. And it gives the option to just save it as a TIFF, PDF, or a Photoshop document. But if you want a, a JPEG, you can click on save it. A copy gives a chance and it gives you more options where you can see JPEG, GIF, PNG. So you use JPEGs if you are printing or if it's a picture, you use JPEG. And if it's a logo or something that has a transparent background, use PNG. I choose JPEG and after renaming it to Vivacious, I save it. And I give more options to even choose how high I want the quality to be like. So you, you can even play with the presets here, which is medium or low for web files. And then high, if you're gonna use a place where you need to be printed and for it to be good. Then you click on okay, and it saves your image for you. If you want to optimize your images for the web, you use file, export, save for web. And the shortcut is Alt Shift Control S. It looks very long, but it's, it's so easy. I mean, save for web, and then you can change even the exact sizes, the width. So maybe I'm using what 500 pixels. Just reduce the size I want. I even see how fast it will be on the internet. And if I want it, either in JPEG or PNG, I can also choose that here. So I want this as a JPEG. It shows me the size and I click on save and save it. And that's Photoshop 101. We are done. Practice these basics and you'll be amazed at what you can create. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below with your Photoshop questions. Happy editing and see you in the next video.